we're broadcasting. All right. There's Daryl Lundy. Morning, Brother Daryl. Mark Solomon's in the house. Everybody's gathering up for uh, to hear Jamie teach us about our website. I thought I knew about websites till I talked to Jamie. Morning, Mark. Daryl's in the house. We're now streaming live to Facebook. Got the record on. Jamie, I think we got it all going on. Oh, did it work? Let me see. Oh, we are. Yes. Awesome. So everyone, I know that um, Zoom did another update. And if you are having problems with streaming or you are having problems with, um, you know, taking Zoom into Facebook, definitely uninstall and reinstall. It's the best advice I can give you. It is the biggest pain in the world, but it works. So thankfully we're streaming again live here today. Oh, good. As you're coming into, well, the Zoom room is the only side I can see, but as you're coming in, if you'll tell us uh, what city and state you're in, that's always fun to know where everybody is. So, you know, we talk about mindset a lot, Zan, here inside the profit culture. And I have to tell you that um, I've been having great success applying the mindsets lessons that we've been teaching and um, I've had some great experiences and you know that I love to wake surf. Yes. Right. Where you pretend you sit, well, pretend you actually do, but you're on a surfboard and you surf behind the boat and doing a 360 on the wake surfboard is like a pro trick. And I was like, I can do this. I can do this. I was focused, focused, focused on what I could do and not on what could happen. Landed that thing this weekend. Oh, was, wow. Like, that is not easy. No, it's not easy. And I was so excited. <laughs> now, how long is your surfboard? So it just depends on the size of the person. Right. So my surfboard is made for my size. I don't know the exact dimensions, but like if I surf on like an adult man surfboard, I get shin splints really easy because I've got to like break, break, break the whole time because it's so long and I have to kind of spread myself out. So uh -huh. you want to get something that's like made for your body weight and your height. Um, and oh, your good. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. So a little excitement there. Everybody sees if you follow me personally, they know you always get some kind of post about me wakeboarding or wake surfing. So. <laughs> that's right. And we have folks on today from Northern Michigan and they've just come out of the frost. So yes, not a lot yes. of water skiing in Northern Michigan. this yes. year. Now you hosted your first virtual event um, yes. for Real to Recharge this past Thursday. And this Thursday, you do the next session with that. And it's people can still register for that, correct? Yes, they can because it's all recorded and they have access to it. So we did the first three hour block um, last Thursday. That's up in the profit culture now. So um, everybody should have gotten an email invite this morning or they can go online to the profit culture. Uh, dot com or zamonroe.com and register. You'll get to be able to watch last week and then join us live uh, Thursday, nine till noon on East Coast time. And uh, we'd love to have some more folks in there. Agents from all around the country are in it. And uh, it is my flagship course. It's everything that a real estate agent needs to know about being a success. And the first Two sessions are really about business building, especially this coming week. And um, then the last one is specific for real estate agents. So uh, I'm excited. Yeah. It's going well. I, I thought I did pretty good. Yeah. And, and not only that, but they get a full month free of the Profit Culture online courses as well. Yeah, they get them all. Yeah, right? they get everything. Yeah. So, um, so it's a, it's a deal for what you pay for the recharge. Plus you get the whole month and uh, you get to ask me every question you ever wanted to ask. So uh, awesome. I was very excited, but today we get to do websites. Yeah. And, um, my first question is, 
doesn't everybody know that they should have a website? I mean, haven't we reached the point of everybody knows this? You would think, but you remember that statistic I told you a couple of months back? I said, it's actually been shown that 45% of business owners still do not have a website, which I know that blows your mind, but that was the statistic from Google. 45% of business owners still do not have a website. Well, 2020 is a landmark year in the turning in the way we do business. And um, I've studied trends my whole life. And one of the things that uh, there was a series of books written around the turn of the century, around the year 2000. And it, the gist of it was information is going to flow so much faster. Change is going to come so much quicker. We've got to keep up. And, and right now, if you don't have a website, I don't know how you're running a business. Yeah, I think that businesses, we've been so used to the 20th century of brick and mortar that when these things happened and then you combine them with the internet, we have to realize that our market now is very much online, if not completely online. And your website is basically your business translated, your brick and mortar translated to the digital world. So... So I have built buildings, I have um, open storefronts and, and, and different things throughout my lifetime. How does designing a building, how does designing the floor plan of a, of a store match up with designing your website? Yeah, so this is a super fascinating subject, okay? And one of the reasons that marketing companies are so valuable to website design companies, um, webmasters, is because we actually understand human behavior. And design absolutely 100% matters when it comes to a website. Um, 75%, okay, that's three quarters, 75% of consumers admit that they will judge a company's credibility based on their website. So let me say it one more time. 75% of consumers admit that they will judge a company's credibility on their website. Okay. Um, I would agree with that completely. Because yeah. when you get there, if it's a mess, you just go, yeah. Well, and not only that, but even like the design elements, does it look outdated? Like it was made back in, you know, the early 2000s and boxed in and, you know, horrible color palettes and it doesn't work on a mobile phone, right? That's a huge one. Um, so you're really looking at, first of all, does this company care? Do they invest in what they put out? So that's, that's a Google study right there for you. Um, another Google study shows that people actually will judge your site within 1 50th to 1 20th of a second. So it's almost an instantaneous judgment that people make on your website as well, right? Yeah. And it has been proven time after time after time again, and this is where understanding human behavior comes in, that the design of your website, I'm not even talking about the words, right? I'm just talking about the design of it will actually affect sales conversions. It will actually affect whether you get new clients, whether you make the sale, whether someone calls office, it influences that. And your website in this digital market, because Zan, if you need um, some type of service that you've not had to use before, where do you go, right? You look on, online. Right, you go online. And so this is like your first impression and we've all heard first impressions matter, right? Right. Oh, without a doubt. And it's, that's nothing new. Years ago when uh, I worked with Blockbuster Video to install their video stores, their research showed uh, six to eight seconds from entering their store, you would decide you're going to rent a video. Same research in new home sales. I mean, it's, right. but, but now we're even quicker because it's online. So, yeah. Yeah. so how often should I look at my website for an update? 
So I'm going to dive into some of that towards the okay. end, and I'm going to talk about the importance of why this matters. But the reason we bring this up today is because I think that everybody who is watching this, they absolutely should be considering updating their website at least every quarter, at least every quarter, at a minimal. Yes. And I'm going to dive into why that matters. But this all plays into basically human behavior is what all we're right. looking at here. So, um, so basically, when you work with a company like, like us, like JK Premier Marketing, we understand human behavior, which is what causes people to buy, to sell, or to reject your company, right? And a lot of times when you have someone just build your website, you know, and they don't understand that, and they just go for what looks aesthetically nice or just whatever the client wants, they will actually tank your results. You'll spend all this money and then you will have very low results from it. For example, Zan, um, web designers and webmasters, they'll tend to put sliders in the hero image. So let me explain what this is. When yeah. you first open up a website, they call it the, the part, the first part that you see inside the square of your own desktop computer, right? It's called the page fold. They actually get that from the newspaper industry, hmm. but it's called the page fold above the page fold. That whole area, that very top section is called the hero area. Okay. And usually there's an image there. Usually there is a headline there or a button that's your hero area. Well, a lot of times web designers will make that a slider. Have you ever been to a website where the image changes right yeah. there? Yeah. Right? They'll do a couple of different, it'll sit there for a second and then it'll change. It'll sit there. For, that has been proven study after study that it will tank your conversions. Study oh, I hate those. Yes, it has proven that. And yet people don't understand that. And you'll see it on all kinds of websites. Right. Oh, yeah. So it's understanding that type of behavior. And we're going to dig into what causes that, but it's digging into those type of things. And we have um, uh, web designers that work with us all the time where they'll have us actually create the design and then they build it because we understand marketing. We understand human behavior, right? Um, so there's something called cognitive fluency. You're going to make me take notes today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this right. is fascinating. And anyone who, they're an entrepreneur or a business owner, you're just going to get a wealth of information here. So cognitive fluency. Yes. All right. um, FL now explain that to me. Yeah, yeah, fluency, right? So cognitive fluency plays a huge factor when it comes to your website and actually increasing the sales and the leads on your website. Now, what is cognitive fluency? Okay. Um, cognitive fluency is basically the experience of how easy or difficult a mental task is. Okay. So it is um, basically, it's not the mental process of it, but it's the feeling that you get when you have a mental task. So if I come to your website, my mental task, that cognitive fluency is how easy or difficult is it to understand your website? Okay, cognitive fluency. I like that. This basically is, it's going to affect how people like perceive or behave or act or respond to your website, okay? And Google has proven that cognitive fluency, okay, how easy or difficult your website is to understand will affect how many conversions you have from that website, okay? So mm -hmm. I know I got a little nerdy there. Let me explain how this works. <laughs> uh, that, that made perfect sense because I have, you're using me as your guinea pig, I know. But I've been to websites and in just a few minutes, I'm so confused, I have to leave. Yes, yes, yes. Or you can't find the information you're looking for, right? Like, how do I Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. Oh, you wait till I get home tonight. I'll tell Laura cognitive fluency. She'll think I'm smart. Put your pipe in your mouth and put on your glasses. Yeah. Is, <laughs> let me tell you some things, baby, about yeah. cognitive fluency. <laughs> But it's, it's oh, the feeling that you get. It's, it's talking about the feeling, the response, the expectation. So, Zan, um, there's basically something, it's called um, a prototypical website, okay? Prototypical right. website. So, prototypic, uh, prototypicality, 
man, I sound so smart today. Proto- you really do. Yeah. I'm going to put on my, my scarf and hold my mocha. A prototypicality is basically an expectation or a way you categorize information. Like, what do you expect? How do you see something? So I'm going to give you an example. When I say these words, you're automatically going to be able to visualize what you would expect them to look at. You ready? All right. So movie theater. Got it. Okay. Airplane. Got it. Living room. Got it. Right? You have in your mind kind of this temp template of what you expect. I talked about that mirror exposure effect that the more you see something, the more you like it. Yeah. Well, when it comes to websites, you want to have a prototypical website. Okay. Now, have you gone to a website where it was bells and whistles? I mean, fancy. I mean, the navigation stuffed up in this really fancy design on the side. There's things coming across at you, videos, all this stuff. And it looks really cool, but you can't figure out where the information is at, right? And your brain just feels overloaded automatically. A prototypical website is a template. You know what a movie theater is going to look like when you go in? If you want to drive sales, if you want to increase sales and leads on your website, there is a specific style, design, color palette, typography to use with your website. Because what happens is the brain likes to take the path of least resistance. It likes yeah. things that are easy. It likes things it can understand. Anything high with cognitive fluency, where my feeling and experience is easy to understand, it's clear, I know where to find the contact us button or to schedule an appointment, I can see the logo. Anything that's designed like that will automatically increase your sales conversions and leads. Okay? Yeah. All right. Well, that makes sense because it'd be like getting in a car and there's no steering wheel and there's no gear shift. Right. Yeah. Listen, you know that I just recently bought a new vehicle, right? Yeah. So I drove my Suburban for years and years and years, put in a new transmission, but it was old school, right? It was a 2010. And oh, just yeah. this year I updated to a brand new Cadillac, right? Uh, SUV. And oh. I get in my Escalade. Well, it's up to date. And I can't figure it out. <laughs> like, I'm like, wait, I don't put a key in the ignition. Wait, what, why would it let me go across this line? Like all right. this stuff, right? And the brain just wants to shut down. You don't want to learn anything new. And so let me just stop. It is so nice to hear you young people say something like that because <laughs> I'm doing, I have a new vehicle too. And I, this morning I was trying to figure out the daggone windshield wipers because it's raining. And I'm like, what does this knob do? What is it? I don't want to look, just give me, oh, that's. You feel that, right? You feel yeah, it. So the website's got to be that. Show me it. It's got to be simple. It's got, things got to be where they normally are. Yes, exactly. Because uh, entrepreneurs struggle with this. You know, as entrepreneurs, we love the latest and the greatest and the shiny and the new. So every time we come to a website, we want to make it you have all this, the latest stuff and the coolest trends, and we want to put a million different slides. And, right. and the, the problem is, is that you have to decide, do you want to look cool or do you want leads? <laughs> do you want sales? Right? right. Because right. there is a template. There is a way to design your website in a way where people feel that cognitive fluency. It's easy. They understand it. They like it. And now here's the key. Instead of me wasting mental energy trying to find your how to buy now button or trying to find out where your address is or even where your service list is, right. now, if you put those things where I expect it, I can now spend my energy on what really matters, which is doing business with you. Right. Right. That energy has not been pulled away. Right. Um, let me translate that into sticks and bricks. When you walk in the door of a business, there should be somebody there that greets you and says, here's how you buy our products and services. Mm -hmm. So you're saying the website should tell the consumer, 
here's how you buy our products and services in the easiest, simplest way. Yeah, I'll give you an example. I just did a web design for a, a new client and they did not want to put a contact us in their navigation. They didn't want to put that there because they only do phone calls. And I told them, I said, if you want to do that, we'll respect you. However, best practices says that we all expect in the right-hand corner, either a button that says schedule consultation or contact us or right. it's your navigation. It's always the right-hand corner. And if you move that anywhere or you don't include that, people are going to sit there trying to figure out, they're not going to just assume I'm supposed to call that phone number. As odd as that may seem to us, the human brain has been trained. Right. The human right. brain is used to this. So there are certain things, and I'm going to give you guys that list of, of best practices here in a moment, but okay. there are certain things that the brain is, is used to. Um, you know, for example, logo, left-hand corner. Right. We're used to that. We're also used to clicking on the logo and taking it back to the homepage, right? right. We're used to a navigation bar at the top. We're used to the hero area that has an image and a headline. When you start to mess with some of that stuff, mm -hmm. you start to dramatically decrease your conversions, okay? Whether that's a sale or a phone call, whatever that is. Oh, you this makes so much sense. Now I know why I like people's websites. Yeah. Or I don't like people's websites. Yes. Yes, it's familiar. It's that mere exposure effect, right? You've gone into the big box stores where like, you have no idea where this item is that you're looking for. You can't oh find God. anybody to help you. You're completely overwhelmed and normally you'll just shut down and not go back. Have you ever done right. that? Yes, oh, absolutely. I, I never go to the big stores anymore. And, 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 and quite frankly, I'm seeing that pendulum swing back towards the customized boutique because there's someone there of expertise that'll help you. Exactly. exactly. So let me translate that to what you're saying. That means your website should be looked at like a salesperson, not a brochure in the sky. Yeah. People tend to kind of throw a little bit of everything in there and they try to cram and jam everything possible and they forget about the user experience. And the user experience is first and foremost. And so people just take all of this stuff and they just jam it into the website, what they think is important. And that would be like me walking into your store and everything that you sell is right up there in the front display case. <laughs> right. Yeah. Here, take one of these. How about that? How about this? How about that? Like a scavenger hunt at this point, right? And so... Uh -huh. There's best practices and ways to design your site to where people naturally feel comfortable and they understand it. Because you've also been to stores where it followed, and stores do this. There's a specific recipe or format of how you lay things out, how you put things and display things. So when you right. walk in, it feels familiar and the brain doesn't have to figure out anything. They're just automatically focusing on buying, right? right. And doing business. It's called called the critical path to sales. There yes. is a critical path you must follow to reach a sale of any product or service. And, and so we've got to take them down that path on the website. You guys do that in real estate. All the time. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There is a formula that you want to follow with that. Right. Let me ask you a question. This is off your topic or well, not off your topic. I went to a website right before I, I need some new dress shirts. So I went to a website, the website launches, and immediately a box pops open that says, uh, register for, you know, sign here. It, I can't go any further until I do something with that box. And my instant, I mean, I haven't been there a fraction of a second. So I closed that box. Why would they put up a box like that in the middle of my search? Right. If they have a smart marketer and they want to do something like that, they can, but that needs to be repeated in another spot. Generally, people kind of get turned off on that and they ignore it. It has a very low conversion rate because it startles you and it's I, not 
expect it. It's not that cognitive fluency. What happens is you disrupt my original thought of why I was going to the site. And now it's caused alarm and now there's been, and, and I'm not gonna say that it's not effective because there are times where that is very effective. But normally what we suggest is waiting for the pop-up box, causing a delay before that comes and deliver what people are expecting first. Yeah. Let me get you know into the feeling. site. Yeah, but exactly what you're describing there, you know that cognitive fluency feeling there right of how that experience is feeling for you and what you wanted was disrupted. Wow. I never thought about a website generating feelings, but it certainly does. Yes. It's called the user experience. Uh-huh. UX, user experience. Um, Google also states that 88%, 88% of consumers who have a bad experience on your website will not return. They will not return. So you get kind of a one chance, you know, that first impression. And if they have a negative experience, and this guys is where we even get it. And I'll dive into this more in a moment, but this is where you even get into even being mobile responsive. If you have not gone to your website and seen what it looks like on this device, this should be your priority. And people kind of get that backwards where they focus only on the desktop guys. 65% of the consumers are using this device. And I bet you after this 2020, you know, health pandemic, it's even more than that at this point, right? Oh, now, wait a minute. In other words, 65% of the people who are visiting my website are not sitting on a computer. They're coming by phone. Yes. yes. So, and, and just because my website is designed to be look good on my computer does not mean it's designed to work on a phone. Yes. And, and I'm so glad that you understand that because when I did work with website design with people, the entrepreneur has that flipped. They only focus on the desktop and I'm like, mobile is everything right now. And it's increasing, right. increasing, increasing and tablet, mobile and tablet. Right. So, so I've got to have, I need to summarize cause my brain's swirling. I've got to have a website. To do that, I need to hire somebody who understands human behavior, not some tech person who's going to put technology on my website. Doesn't matter what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Or a 14 year old. I can get a 14 year old from the junior high. They can design a website for me, can't they? Right, right. Yeah, right. They're not going to understand human behavior or what's my new word? Cognitive fluence. Yeah, you got to say that more snooty though when you say it, okay? <laughs> cognitive fluency there you go <laughs> and uh i'm <clears throat> becoming fluent in cognitive work which means thinking easy it's see i'm a country boy cognitive fluency means how easy this task is going to be how easy the mental task is going to be that, that feeling that you're getting it's the feeling yeah the feeling it's producing you yep. wait till i get home i'll be smart because that could be you know easy or difficult Right? Yeah. Is that feeling that you're getting of that process? Yeah. And if it's easy, then my brain is going to gravitate towards it. Right. Because everybody wants something that they're familiar with. We all like it. I mean, we just talked about our vehicles. And right. although I like my new vehicle, it frustrates the heck out of me. <laughs> you know, like the other night I was driving and all of a sudden the lights just went off on it. And I have no idea why, you know? And it's, so many buttons it outsmarts me. My Q keeps my Quentin keeps saying he's like, this vehicle is smarter than I am. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And my computer is now, and most things are. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so one of the things in my studies of how the mind works, we only have a limited capacity of thought and focus time during a day. Right. Most of that is in the morning. And so if I hit a website that causes me to have to really think through the processes, it's burning cognitive. Um, I only have a limited number of thinking minutes a day. I'll just put it that way. Mm -hmm. And um, so we've got to make our website way better, way simpler, way easier. Do you remember when, I think it was two weeks ago, and I was talking about the bullseye client? Right. Yes. I'm talking about understanding your audience, understanding your client. Even when you build your website, 
you need to know who you're building that site for. And let me give you an example. Men and women are very different. <laughs> no, really? Yes. And the way we process information and what stimulates us is very different. So yes. if we're designing a website for women and it's e-commerce, it's shopping, we know how to create that for them, right? It's right. women's clothing, we'll know how to do that. My husband, something can be sitting right in front of him and he's still gonna ask, Jamie, where's this, where's that, right? Like, right. no offense, yeah, but- Men are different, there's are different. no doubt. And so when we design a site, if we know we're designing for men, we'll design it very different the way we put the information. We don't get into all this flowery description stuff. We're like, to the point, dump, here it is, here it is, bye, right? Hey, right here. Millennials versus my boomers, or even Gen X, right? The way we design, we design with the audience in mind, and we have to know even what they like, what resonates with them, what attracts them. So very, very different. So for those folks listening, what this means for you is you need to go back two weeks and watch our show that you did because if you're running a business and you don't have a specific targeted consumer, yeah, then your website design could be for one and it's not for another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've got to learn who your customer is and then design for them. Right. Our website um, for JK Premier Marketing, we attract a lot of boomers and Gen X. That's our client. Um, and so when we write our headline right there on the hero, it's not anything fancy. In fact, it's extremely simple. It's just straight to the point, literally mm -hmm. straight to the point. And entrepreneurs have a hard time with that because entrepreneurs want to get very cool and cute and, you know, clever with their headlines and their titles. And you have to understand the sale is most important. Communicating with the brain, making it easy to understand that's your number one priority. So when we work with designing websites for businesses, getting that across to them of, we just gotta be like straight to the point, so clear, what is it that you do? Don't be vague, you know, we don't wanna confuse. That's your number one goal. And people get that aesthetic ahead of oh, yeah. sale. And this clarity, you want to drive sales with a website? You got to be as clear as day, as simple as day. So you want to dive into some of these best practices for a website? Yeah, I got one question. Uh, Mark uh, from California says, does the website content need to follow the eighth grader rule of simplicity? In other words, keep it simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely. And, you know, they say that most Americans have an eighth grade reading level. So even the words that you use, you, you don't want to use cognitive fluency, no. <laughs> but the words that you use, the call to actions, um, you want to keep it as simple as possible for anyone to understand. Yes. To get straight to the point. Yes. And, now, and this will be industry specific because if you deal with a very sophisticated audience and that's your bullseye client, that's your target, then you do want to use sophisticated language, right? That that resonates with them. So this will be industry specific, but for general rule of thumb for businesses, keep it still simple as possible. There's a book on my shelf right over there. And it's written by the world's leading expert on networks. And he said, he says exactly the same thing. He says, within your network, you have your own language. Mm -hmm. So wine connoisseurs have a language. Yeah. Um, realtors have a language. Attorneys have a language. So if that's my client, I'm thinking here, if that's my client, then I need to speak to them in their own words. Yes. Yes. And that's where you come in. Yes. Yes. To it be is. able to write it in words that mean something to them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. I think, you know who gets the most out of these sessions? Who? I do. Oh, because dang. every, about halfway through each one of these, I go, damn, if I had to pay her <laughs> to teach me all this stuff, I'm so good. Let's talk about best practices for your website. Now, you gave yep. me a, a list of about 10 things here. Some yep. of them I understand and some of them I don't. So. Yes. So uh, let's do let's do the ten best practices for the website. 
Yep. So the first best recommendation I could give you is put things where people expect them. Now, if you're like, well, I don't know what that is. Every website looks different. You want to go to very popular websites. You know, you want to go to websites like Amazon would be a great example, right? Put things where people expect them and use um, well-known websites like Amazon to see how people are trained to find information. Okay. Now Amazon's very huge. I mean, that's the Amazon, right? Of all kinds of stuff, but there's still those best practices. You'll see that being used, you know, keeping the navigation at the top. There's nothing worse than when you have a fancy navigation that's pushed at the bottom or pushed to the side, you know, keeping the navigation at the top, keeping your logo in the left-hand corner. That's called your golden spot, right? That's where you want to keep your logo. So you want to make sure that you put it where people expect it. Contact us always on the far right. Okay. So that's the first one. And if you need examples, just go to popular websites. You're going to see a pattern emerge over and over and over again. Um, the second one, number two would be less is more. Less is more. And this is a tough forever. Yeah. Yeah. This is a tough one though for my entrepreneurs. Cause like I told you, they like to jam a whole lot of stuff, you know, in the header, the hero area, they want to put like slide, slide after slide after slide, you know, and it's coming. Oh, yeah. Right. So less is more. Um, this goes for not only images or body copy, like the words, but this even goes on the color palette. Now I told you that 65% of consumers now are using these things to shop your business. You will notice that your websites that have been designed by marketers who understand human behavior, there's a lot of what we call negative space or white space. You want a lot of white space and not colored backgrounds, not tons and tons of image backgrounds. You want some negative space because when you view that one here, it helps the eye. The more that the eye has to translate, the more colors, the more variations, the more it has to understand, the more that the brain has to work. I mean, it's just science. So you want to have lots of white space yeah, on your website. Yeah. And that's a basic tenet of marketing. Is, yes. Is put your message in the middle and make it pop. Yep. 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 So... Oh, give me a second here. I had to make some notes too. So I remember all my, all my stuff. Well, um, and, and what you've made me think of is the world's most successful website is Google and it's so simple, but they have a rule. There can't be, but just so many words on that screen, no matter what. Mm -hmm. And you just type in what you're looking for, but there's a button you can click and go into Google itself. And it's just everything, but their opening page is so, so simple. And there's nothing but white. Nothing but what? Yes, yes. And a lot of times when we do websites, people will ask, well, can you, you know, make the background blue and can you make the background red? And it's like, we really need some white space in here to help the eye and help the brain calm down. And it's, right. it's behavior. It's human behavior. Isn't that interesting? I like this stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like this a lot because it ties right back to what I've taught for 50 years in a store. It's got to be clean. You've been in these stores where you have to squinch up and walk through the aisles because you're going to knock stuff off the shelf. It's too much stuff, too much clutter. I'm not going to buy it. Or you have to dig. Like I am not a fan of like the TJ Maxx stores because just stuff and it's not organized. You got to dig. And I'm just like, I can't handle it. <laughs> I just can't handle it. They were well made. <laughs> I, I don't like flea markets where I have to dig. I just want it all organized and structured, right? <laughs> now that's my personality. But You're a little bit OCD. I'll, I'll admit yeah. All right. So here I've got number one is put things where the consumer expects them. Number two, less is more. Mm -hmm. What's three? So number three is understanding how people are going to read your website. Okay. Now, remember I talked about earlier, there's the page fold with the hero image. So when you log to a website, it's just that, that rectangle area that you see there at the top first impression. People look at that in a Z pattern like literally the letter z okay mm -hmm. they look at logo they look at that right hand corner 
And that right hand corner is where I told you the contact us or schedule consultation. It's basically like your prime real estate right there. What do you want them to do? Okay. So you want to have whatever that is or buy now, sign up now. So they'll look at the right hand, they go across and then they'll read your headline. Cool. People make a mistake of not putting a headline there, Zan. They make a mistake of not putting a headline right across the middle. They do as it's a Z pattern. And sometimes they'll just have an image, right? Um, and there's no real copy there. You want to make sure that you have logo, call to action, whatever it is that's prime real estate for you, and then that heading right there. Whether it, and that's where I was talking about being really clear. I call it your million dollar message. Be really clear about what it is that you do, what's the problem that you solve, what's the, you know, what is it that you generate for them, the results that you generate. But that goes right there because people make an instantaneous impression. This is the most valuable area of your entire website. When we design a website, I will spend the first two hours, and I'm not exaggerating, the first two hours of my designing is focused on that area, specifically that area. Um, um, yep, it is going to be the, um, image, the headline, the navigation. Let me translate that into real estate. When you pull up to, you know, house for sale, you pull up, the very most important thing is the front of the house and the key is the front door. Mm -hmm. and, and if you can paint, clean, wash, and make your front door pop, people feel like the house is clean, the, you know, the value is there. Um, so this is the front door of your website. Yep, that here above the page fold right there is the most important place. And then after that, people begin to read in what's called an F pattern. So once they move past the hero area, now they start to read in an F pattern, similar to how you would read a book. Yeah. Same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So understanding, um, and they've actually done eye tracking studies, but understanding how people are looking at that information will help you with your design layout, how you're formatting the design inside of your website, right? Um, so that's number three. Number three is understanding how people consume the information on your website. Treat your hero area different from the body area. Okay. Okay. All right. Number four. Headlines, headlines are crucial, crucial, okay? Mm -hmm. Google studies have shown that 79% of people on your website do not read. They only scan the headlines. They may. They only scan the headlines. After they read, they spend reading content on your website for about five seconds is what they have shown but they are looking at headlines. So I go to a website and I always see the mistake of they'll have one headline and then it's just copy after copy, just paragraph after paragraph after paragraph, right? <gasps> People aren't reading that. People are scanning your headlines and your headlines, those are your heavy hitters. So you really have to focus on what you're saying there. Those headlines should be big and bold. They should be larger format, larger font size, and they should be bold because when people go to your website, they're going to read the headlines and that's about it. That's something the newspapers learned a hundred years ago. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's amazing how things don't change. <laughs> human yeah. behavior. Well, it, it's human behavior. Wait a minute. You talked about human behavior. Yeah. Yeah. But this is part of helping that um, cognitive fluency. Right. When to you take time to do that, it will create ease of mind. And we always suggest having a headline every two paragraphs. So yeah. we always state, we're like, you know, about every paragraph should be about two to three lines. Okay, so we're not writing a, a paper here. We're writing a website. About two to three lines per paragraph. And every two paragraphs, then have a, a headline or a subheadline. And cool. those subheadlines pay attention to what they say because that's what people are going to read. The, say that again, I was, I was- Pay attention to what the headline and subheadline sub say, because that's what people are actually going to read. Ah. Okay? All right. All right. So that's more important than the copy I'll put underneath. 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. 79% of people don't even read it. They are looking at the headlines. They're scanning your website, which brings us to number five, which goes along the same thing. Visuals. <laughs> Visuals tell a story and they tell a story easily and quickly, right? Uh -huh. You know, they always say a picture is worth a thousand words, right? Uh -huh. True. <laughs> and if you want that cognitive fluency on your website, the pictures do the talking for you. Uh -huh. And, and, where do I get good pictures? Where do I get good visuals? Do y'all have services where we, cause I know I just can't go out on the internet and steal a picture and stick yeah. it up online. No. <laughs> Those yeah. are copywritten images. Yeah, you can actually purchase licenses for images. Um, at our company, we actually hold those licenses. So when you do a, a website with us or we do graphic design for you, we cover you with those licenses. And then of course, our graphic designer does stuff. We also hire photographers, but images, you want your images to actually tell that story. And you'll know this one because you taught me this with PowerPoints, faces. Yes. Faces, smiling faces. faces. Go, go into that for a moment. Well, years ago, the teaching PowerPoint, humans are attracted to other human faces because we want to look at it and say, do I know those people? Um, cartoons? No. Um, and, and I know I still have my Zam and Row logo. Laura and I were talking about it yesterday, but, but people are attracted to other human faces. It's our number one uh, attraction. So the pictures should be happy people doing happy things. Yeah. It's interesting because on social media, when we run posts and ads, generally we try to keep as much, we don't always do it, but for the most, most of the time, the biggest ratio are faces because people on social media will stop and look to do exactly that. Like, do I know this person? Um, USAA, they're fantastic at it. They get me every single time, even though I teach this, I will be scrolling and their photos look like it was taken with a camera. So it looks like it was one of my friends who did it. It's not super professional. And I stop and look like, do I know this person? Oh, USAA, you got me again. <laughs> so. they, but it, we're, we're programmable. We're humans. I mean, this is how the human mind works. And, yes. and uh, yes. you know, but, but to understand, well, I, I'll just, I have a good friend. He grew up, he and I went to high school together. He's in the commercial real estate industry. He's a tobacco farmer from Eastern North Carolina. The last person you would ever think would say this. He's been in the real estate business now as a commercial agent. He does shopping centers and you know everything big. He told me the other day, he said, if I could go back to college, I would get my master's degree in psychology. He said, not business school. I can figure out business. But what we need to understand is how humans think. Yes. And once you do, then websites become crystal clear. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've led us down this path today. I mean, things are written now. I know why my website that you just redesigned and anybody listening needs to go to zamonro.com and look at a, uh, you know your design. So... I mean, it just gets real simple when you understand. Right. All right. So that was number five, visuals. Visuals tell a story. Uh, headlines, pictures, people's faces. Mm -hmm. What else? Yep. So number six is make the information easy to process. And there's a few best practices for this. So for example, typography, the type of font that you're going to use right? Yeah. So if I create a headline, like what's that font? Times New Roman, Arial. You want to choose something that is easy. They actually have something called Google Fonts. And Google Fonts is what the fonts that Google will display. But for best practices, normally like Arial is great. Um, there's, a, there's a whole list that you can choose from. But you want fonts that are very easy to read and not script right? We don't want anything that's like handwrite writing looking or cartoonish looking. We want something that is easy to read. And then your font size. So generally we will take a font size anywhere from 14 pixels to 18, right? So your font size anywhere between 14 and 18. Um, and knowing your target audience also helps, right? So if you know you're yes. going to work 
older generation, get that font size up higher. Yes. <laughs> so I can see them on, I can't, yes, I've been to websites and it's like, oh my God. And of course I work on a small laptop, but still, you know, right, gotta right. get out the reading glasses. Which then also brings even line spacing. So optimal line spacing is about 24 pixels between. So you would have nice line spacing between that. So it's just very easy on the eye. The brain is not feeling frustrated. You're not having to zoom in and try and see. And, and especially when it comes to these devices. I'm sure you've been on websites where it's like you got to sit there and turn it sideways and then scroll in and try and read all of it. And so the easier you're making this, the higher those sales conversions are going to be. Make yourself easy to do business with, right? And um, again, you said like colored fonts versus okay. black and white. What's the Yeah, we generally try to keep black colored font on a white background. Now that's not like you always have to do that, but when you have large paragraphs of information, that would be highly recommended. You can have areas and statements that do have a colored background. Just make sure it contrasts well. You know, maybe it's white on blue. But when there's like a lot of information to read, maybe it's several paragraphs, best practice would be black font on a white area. Mm -hmm. Which is why books are printed on white paper with black ink because right. the human eye sees it best. Right. You also want to do your ratio of your website. And this has to do with being modern with today's right. society. And that is, you've seen the old websites where they were kind of boxed in. It looked like you're watch, looking at this row and then there was all this negative space on the side. You want a nice full width website. We call it a 16 to nine ratio. Think of a widescreen TV. Right. Same formatting. You want it widescreen. You want it 16 to nine. These devices right here, same thing. You turn them sideways. So when you do a website, think in terms of that ratio. When you're, when you're laying out your design, think of it in a wide perspective, right? right? Yeah, widescreen TV is how I always remember it because um, in my speaking career, I've done the evolution from original PowerPoint was the square box. And yeah. I, I was one of the first to go to a 16 by nine format and you can get so much more information in that space and it fits the screens better. And, yeah. and this has nothing to do with websites. I mean, it kind of does, but even when you're doing videotaping your family or you're doing video and I have to remind my husband of this all the time, turn widescreen, turn your camera this way, then start filming because that's how we're viewing our information. Now we're viewing it in that landscape. So turn your phone too. Yeah, no. not vertical. And then I have to watch right. the grandbabies in that little slot up there. Right, right. You got the video of, of our daughter wakeboarding. She's only five yeah. wakeboarding, right? I was like, turn that video landscape. <laughs> I love it. Uh, All right. So that was number six. Yep. What's number seven? So number seven, treat every page on your website. I don't care if it's the contact page, the presentations page, the sales page. Every page on your website needs to be treated like it's the first page the consumer sees. It needs to be treated as a home page. The biggest right. mistake I see people do is they will focus all their attention on that home page, and then you go to what we call your interior pages. They'll go to a different page on the website, and it's just tons of copy, or maybe it's kind right. of an afterthought. You need to treat every single page on your website like a what we call landing page. And this is why. Google search. You may type in a search phrase. Well, Google looks at what we call keywords. There are certain words that you've typed in where Google goes out there and looks for a website that's going to match those keywords you typed in there. So your website may populate, but it may not populate on the home page. It may populate one of your interior pages. Right. Or you're running, maybe, you know, we run ads for people all the time on Facebook and Google. We will run an ad, let's say you're a family lawyer for child custody, an ad for child custody. We will send you to the child custody page. We're not going to drop you off at the home page because we want to deliver the information you were searching for. So you have to think about that. People are searching phrases that are within your website. So you want to make sure that every page inside of your website is treated as a first impression. 
right? Mm -hmm. It's designed to make a sale no matter what page I land on, you're selling me, it's optimized, and you're following all these best practices that we just talked about. Does that make so sense? So I have my image, the golden, you know, across the top, and then the pattern. banner, and then off we go. Yep. Oh. Yep. So you're going to treat that Z pattern and the F pattern. You're going to do right. white space, you know, treat it the exact same way because you don't know where people are going to land. They don't always go to the homepage. Right. Yeah, and I've ended up in the middle of a website and you have to back up to get back to the homepage, but it took me right where I wanted to go in the first place. Yes, yes, cool. yeah. yes. All right, that was seven. What about eight? So number eight is always make sure that you are optimizing and updating your website. So always optimize up there with uh, cognitive fluency optimize yes you're gonna have to explain <laughs> optimize to me yeah basically like um edit it for the optimal results ah. right you want to have an update editorial eye. yeah you want to yeah. update it have an editorial eye and you want to do that continuously and i see people make this mistake where they'll create a website and then they just put it on autopilot and it's like five ten years later they still haven't looked at it right that would be me there's a couple of reasons for this. I'm not saying that you have to pay for a whole new redesign. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the information, the images, editing and updating information. Google loves when websites have new information and are updating. See, Google is a business. Google has a client, which is us, right? We're the consumers. When you do a search with Google, when you choose to use their search engine, they want to make sure that the customer is happy. They want to make sure that you get the information that you were looking for. They also want to make sure that you get the most up to date information. Um, so any website that is showing that they are constantly updating and adding new information. This is why blogs are so awesome for websites because it's always adding new information the more chances you have of populating and search results because they like when you are showing that you're not set it and forget it. You are speaking to your audience. You're treating the online audience as if you care about the information they're getting. So I would recommend at a minimal every quarter, but I would like it if you would do it once a week, if you even could, if you had a blog where you're adding new articles or you're adding new content, my company, we look at our website all the time. We're constantly tweaking. We're constantly adjusting. We're always changing headlines depending on our market, which is another one. When COVID hit, our whole homepage completely changed. Our message changed to meet our market where it was at at that moment. Right. Now that restrictions have lifted, we've shifted again. But this is an opportunity for you to meet your market where it's at, right? So you're kind of looking at that information. Not only that, but the way people consume information. Because Dan, have you ever noticed how your phone formats information? Have you ever noticed like all the apps are in like blocks and squares and nice neat rows and columns? I had not noticed that, but can you convince my wife to put her blocks and squares and stuff exactly where mine are so I can use her <laughs> phone? Because she puts her stuff in different places. Yeah, you know, this is called mere exposure effect. You've been trained to process information like that. Right. Well, right now, websites that take information and they format it in rows and use blocks are extremely successful because that brain goes, okay, this has a high cognitive fluency here. I've got it, it's very easy to use. And so I know you've done it where you've gone to a website and all the images are blocked. They're like mashed together and like oh, yeah. this crazy grid. And then, or you'll scroll through and it's like big image after big image after big image. Like it's just this ton smashed together. What you don't realize is our brain likes blocks. Our brain likes rows. Our brain likes columns. And you want to know why? Because of these things right here and mere exposure effect. The more you see it, the more you like it. Therefore, if you treat your website like that, you'll notice like on your website, we always have columns of, we don't go past columns of three, right? right? Yeah. Blocks, blocks and rows, columns and rows, right? Yeah. 
We don't get super artistic. We don't get super fancy. And that's yeah. because we've been trained to learn and process quickly from these. So guess what I use when I do a design? Box run. <laughs> well, it makes perfect sense. Isn't that cool? Sort of like a grocery store. There are gondolas that make the rows and we know how to work the pattern. Yes, yes. You've gone into restaurants where, and even grocery stores, where it's not formatted like the average store. Yes. And it's just overwhelming. I, we went yes. to a restaurant the other day and I was like, do we seat ourselves? Do we get our own stuff? Like, you know, they kind of messed with the system. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what I want to do here. <laughs> don't like it. Exactly. And you'll walk away if you're not careful because yeah. you're exactly right. Nothing's worse than, I know I checked into a fancy hotel in California some years ago and there was no reception desk anywhere. Uh -huh. Walked in the lobby and there's no place to go to check in. And you just stood there, you know, and, and I'm up, you know, stand there just wondering. And finally, I see people have iPads and they're just roaming around checking people in, apparently. And yeah, I've, I've never been back to that hotel, nor do I intend to. And what happened, your focus was off of the real reason you were there, right? Yeah. And that's the same with the website. When you're doing things like that, your focus is off of making a purchase decision or if you want to do business with them and it's not one, well, where do I find this? Or what am I supposed to do here? Or what services do you offer? Even like your navigation, I had a client where they wanted to use a fancy title for their services. Instead of just calling it services, they had this fancy title. I think it was like something about what's the something, something difference, right? They were using this fancy title. And I said, I would hesitate on that because people don't think in those terms. You need to be black and white services. I know it's not fancy. I know it's not cool, but your sales will be higher if you speak the language everyone understands and do what's expected, right? Right. That typicality there. Wow. That was eight. You got nine? Yep. Mobile responsive. And we brought this up earlier. Mobile needs to be thought of first and then desktop. That has changed dramatically, especially over these last few years. But 63% of your consumers are using, 63 to 65% are using these now to find you. And like I said, especially after the 2020 COVID-19 crisis, I guarantee you that's even higher because that was a 2019 statistic. So I guarantee you it's even higher than that. You need to look at what your design how it's formatting, how easy is it to understand and read. In fact, you will notice that when we do websites, there will be more images on the desktop than there is on the mobile. We'll actually hide some of the images from the mobile and even information because we don't want to overwhelm people. This is a very small device. Right. You can overwhelm people there very quickly. And so you have to make sure that you deliver information in a way they understand and it's called uh, mobile responsive is basically what it is when you work with a web designer you want to ask them you know is the mobile responsive design part of this package are you going to take care of the mobile responsive side of things so that is very very important all the web developers that we work with that we recommend they all do custom mobile responsive design sites when we create a website schematic a design for the webmaster to use we have the desktop version and then we actually create a whole other schematic designed for mobile. This is how the images are going to stack. This is where I want the headlines. I want to hide this information. Very different experiences, but you have to keep that in mind. Yeah, because you, you told me when you were building, re, wait a minute, let me get the right word. You were um, optimizing my site. When you were optimizing my site uh, recently, you said, I'm about finished with the website design and then we'll go to the mobile. So you need to look through the website first. Mm -hmm. And um, whew, I, I feel like I have uh, uh, learned a whole new language. And then in some ways it's all stuff I already knew. Yes. Yes. I mean, it's, it's just common sense if you're in the sales industry or the store design business, um, so one last question, yep. or maybe this is number 10. I don't know. 
how do I make myself show when you Google search, uh -huh. how do I get to show up first? Yep. Yep. That is the most popular question ever. <laughs> Everyone. Now, wants I want to be first. I want to be yes. first. Yes. Everyone wants to know why am I not showing up first or how do I get to do this first? Um, here's the deal. There's a whole, there's a whole nother session on that on like how you can optimize your website and make it populate first, right? Beat your competitors, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of mystery behind it as well. Google lets you know some things, they don't let you know others. There are 2 billion, 2 billion websites online. That is 2,000 <laughs> million. <laughs> yeah. That's how many websites are online and that's just today. Okay, that's just a 2020 statistic, right? That's before lunch. Yeah, you have a lot of competition. So there are a lot of things that you can do to help optimize your website, that you can help increase its chances of getting shown. But what we do at JK Premier Marketing is we actually run paid ads for you so that when people do a search, you're, you pay for your website to populate. And that's the best strategy that I would recommend because no matter how much you're gonna hound your website developer, there are some things that are gonna be completely out of their control. Um, and there's just a lot of details that go into that. But there are things that you can do. I mean, I mentioned the blogs, right? Blogs are awesome. You're showing Google that I'm adding more content. Mobile responsiveness, if your website, and Google released this one or two years ago, maybe it's been a little bit longer, um, that if your site is not mobile responsive, they're not even considering you at this point. All mobile responsive websites get considered first because they already know where people are at. They're meeting their market. So even making sure that your website is mobile responsive um, will help as well. And there's a lot of other tricks, tricks to it. But what we recommend is if you are wanting to be aggressive with your website and have it populate, then we run what's called digital ads inside of Google. Those are paid ads. But the nice part is, you only pay when people actually click on that and go to your website. Now, why do I bring this up? If you're going to spend money to get your website to show up, right? You're going to spend money for people to click on it and go to your website. Then all the stuff I just spoke about today, you better make sure has been applied to your website because if not, people are going to crash and burn the moment they, op they click on that ad and open up your site. So when we have people ask us to run digital ads, you know what the first thing we do is? I go to the website and I say, can I sell? Can I make a sale off of this website? Because otherwise you're just gonna waste money. So it all starts right there. It starts with the front door. And, and you are passionate about people not wasting money. I, yeah. I, just, um, <laughs> you, I love it when you, you get all wound up when someone wastes money. So if, if I have a website that I haven't looked at in a while, it's time to get it mm -hmm. up to snuff. It's time to clean it up some. And you did a fabulous job with my website. I would recommend anyone go to zamandro.com, not to hire me, but to look at the, uh, uh, the design work, which once I see it, I go, oh, this looks so good. But now I understand why, because it, it is, cognitively fluent yes. it's easy for my mind to follow it's uh what was your other word um the pattern of the website um typicality yes yes yeah and then we've got our thing so so folks if you're listening let me help you out with this if you're not in the website design business which i am not if you sort of understood a lot of what Jamie was telling you. The simple solution is you contact Jamie Kite at JK Premier Marketing and you get her to look at your website and tell you what it would need to fix. And it's not that expensive. Uh, a friend of mine called me again this morning. Well, that lady that you said to call her, I said, yeah, Jamie. Um, now, is she really expensive? Because we've all heard these stories of a hundred thousand dollar website and oh, 50, yeah. I mean I, I work with a company that not long ago spent eighty five 
thousand dollars to build a website and it's horrendous yeah the nice part is Zan is that we understand that you already have investment with your website so we don't go in there and reconstruct your entire site what we do is optimize it so if you yeah. hire us if you've already have an investment with your website what we do is we come in and we don't rebuild this thing we just add different elements, hide different elements, help you with, and that's what marketing is, positioning your brand or your company to the market, right? That's what we do. So we're not sitting here reinvesting a whole new website. In fact, I don't want to do that because Google's not going to like that, right? right? We're just simply making some edits. We're using an editorial eye. It's kind of like hiring an interior decorator, right? To come in and, yeah. and redesign your house, update come it from in the and redo. And it's not that expensive. I mean, it's not that expensive. It's, in the, today's world, it's it's absolutely well. It's kind of cheap, and it's a necessity. I would dare uh, say I would actually say it's extremely expensive, because if you don't do this, you're going to lose money. You're going to leave money on the table. You're going to lose sales, and maybe the market didn't use your website so much five years ago. Let me tell you what today. They are there and your millennials are coming through. Your Gen Z is coming through and it is going to cost you a lot of money. If you don't address your site, it's going to, it's going to be very expensive. I would dare say as far yeah. as losing sales. And, and I don't know about anybody out there listening, but I don't want to lose sales. I don't want to lose people who need a consultant or a coach or somebody you know, to do what I do. So Jamie, wow. <laughs> Another fabulous day of information. And I, I made notes. I have my staff out there. I'm like, y'all got to go watch this video as soon as we finish. Cause you know, they're uh, and, and probably some of our other companies that we run need upside up updating on the website. So uh, we'll be calling you again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Zan, it's always enjoyable here and uh we're gonna go ahead and continue to add this this will be available for a replay for about a week and this is going to be moving into the profit culture online courses and there's additional bonus material that i'm actually adding to this the templates that we use for the schematic is going to be only accessible inside the profit culture courses the online membership so for those of you who you feel like you're at a plateau in your business you feel stuck or you simply want to go to that next level of scaling your business, go to theprofitculture.com and there you will see access to our online courses and online membership. And you get all of this information. We also have email marketing, how to create, um, you know, sales funnels. We talk about creating wealth, independent financial wealth. Um, we get into all kinds of stuff in there. So again, theprofitculture.com for that membership. And uh, we'll be back next Tuesday at one o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And you've been busy because I've seen several new courses appear in the profit culture. You've been busy and I've got to keep up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, if you're paying attention, save this date, June the 9th, no, July, yeah. uh, July the 9th. I'm going to do a session or we may do a session together on creating wealth. Yes. It's, a, it's not in our normal rotation. This is a special deal. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're interested, one o'clock East Coast time, that way the folks in California and Hawaii can tune in. And we also pick up a Europe if necessary. Uh, but uh, one o'clock, July 9. Jamie, it's always a pleasure. Oh yeah, always have lots of fun. And, and don't forget to wear your scarf and your glasses and your pipe when you talk about cognitive fluency. <laughs> yes. It'll be on um, today I learned about cognitive. And, and then Luke. use that to get Laura to move all her apps in the same order as your phone, right? Oh yes, because she drives me nuts when I pick up her phone. I'm like, the weather is not where it's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. All right, everyone. We had a fabulous time with you today, and we will see you next Tuesday at one o'clock Eastern Standard Time. You guys have an amazing day. Thank you so much, Zan. See ya.